Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are on the planet. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Monday, the 31st of January, last day of the month, Bull versus Bear webinar with Steve Miley on the call for trade day. So welcome, everyone. We're going to go for a kind of normal run through in here today, but um, slight difference on a Monday. Remember, we do this, what I like to call the shape of the week. We're going to take a look at what are the major um, data points that we have going through the whole week rather than just looking for today. The reason for look at, looking at that, even though we're um, a, a day trading um, platform here, uh, um, trade day, um, is that, you know, depending if, the, if you've got more data at the beginning or the end of the week, and it can shift the, the amount of maybe volatility that we get um, at different points in the week. And you might then want to adjust your trading style accordingly. Now, obviously, at the moment, um, markets are fairly volatile all the time anyway, regardless of data. But I think it's good practice to get into um, rather than just looking at the data you've got coming up in the next hour or on, on that day. It's good to have an idea of what you've got coming up in the week to give an idea of the week. Um, so we'll go through the calendar for the whole week for both the, the macro fundamental economic release data and also the earnings calendar. See what earnings, major earnings we've got coming up this week. Um, rather than actually going through the calendar in uh, detail in here, um, I write this. So this something might be interesting. I, we have a kind of a sister site called FX Explained um, that I'm the editor-in-chief of, and I write a, a weekly kind of recap and outlook um, piece each week. Um, and here it is here. And then in that weekly recap and outlook, look, it's got a video with it, so you can watch it there. It's a fairly short video. But um, what you I also run through in here is um, a calendar in here of the most important standout points, rather than going for every single point in the week, um, the standout um, points of the uh, of the week. So I'll run through those, and then we'll dip back into the calendar um, on the micro stuff. But we have um, Chinese uh, New Year this week. So today is uh, Chinese New Year's Eve, Monday, um, and Chinese New Year um, celebrations go on all week and markets are closed in China. And that can often um, impact markets if, if China are a big driving force of financial markets at the time. However, right now, the focus is really on, um, has been on the Fed and on the US equity market. So I don't think, um, you know, if, if you've got something like, you know, um, back in the 2019, when we had the uh, US-China trade war going on, you know, the fact that they were closed for a week and then reopening, that kind of had, it could have an impact on markets. But um, now, um, um, this right here, right now, at the moment, I don't think the Chinese New Year. It does mean there might be a slight lack of liquidity, um, but it's probably not going to have too big an impact on the markets. We're looking for that the Chinese are closed all week. Chinese markets are closed all week. Um, going through the week, though, we do get EU GDP today and German CPI. Now, if we go back to the calendar, I think we've already had those, the EU um, so where are we in here? Yeah, we had the uh, GDP data is already out. And the German CPI is out, um, not too long now. Probably not going to impact too aggressively on markets that we're looking at. Um, moving on um, into the week. We get the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, in play. It'd be interesting to see what they're doing. Uh, remember, um, um, a lot of commodities produced out of Australia, and it would be interesting to see if the, the pickup in the global economy, the post-pandemic pickup in the global economy, um, is benefiting Australia. And with the RBA, um, as with some of the other central banks we're seeing globally, certainly, um, obviously, we've seen the Fed um, 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 indicate in last week um, and over the last month um, a, a very likelihood of a, a rate hike in March. Um, and and now the Fed, the market pricing in five rate hikes out of the Fed um, for 2022, um, and also the uh, Bank of England, which I'll come to shortly, um, are looking to inter increase interest rates. Um, so it'd be interesting to see um, the developments from the RBA as well. That could have a little impact on, on, on markets. We're looking at certainly going to have an impact on the Australian dollar if you're trading that. Um, on Tuesday, we also get German retail sales, and then we get global um, market. Um, um, PMI, uh, manufacturing PMI from market, M-A-R-K-I-T. And we also get US ISM manufacturing um, PMI. So if we go through down to Wednesday in here, sorry, that's the earnings calendar. If we go through to Wednesday, uh, what we're seeing here is we start to get all the uh, PMI data coming through. And uh, sorry, on Tuesday, excuse me, Tuesday, all the PMI data coming through um, from Europe in the morning, from market. And then we also get it from the US from market. Um, and then more importantly, we get it from um, the ISM data. That's the Institute of Supply Management. Now, the Institute of Supply Management is more important for the US, but for the rest of the globe, the market data is the important data uh, that we are going to be monitoring on Wednesday. Um, going back to my article here. So, uh, 
um, on uh, Wednesday, sorry, that's on Tuesday. On, on Wednesday, we get uh, EU CPI, and most important for us, we're going to get the US ADP employment change. Remember, the ADP employment change is put out by ADP, and it's a it's a guesstimate, it's a precursor of what the um, the employment report could be, which is then released on Friday, which I'll discuss just shortly. Um, Thursday, so the, the second half of the week gets really, really busy, guys. So ADP on Wednesday, we get then global market and US ISM services and composites. We've had the manufacturing data on Tuesday. Two days later, we get the um, global market and US ISM services data, and then the composite for, for the composite of both the manufacturing and service sector. We get those all coming through on Thursday. And we also get the Bank of England and the ECB, the European Central Bank, are in play. Now, Bank of England, probably the biggest focus there, um, a rate hike is expected. Remember, the, the, the Bank of England have already increased rates at the end of last year. Another now three rate hikes are now um, kind of becoming expected. So if I, if I jump to this article in here from Bloomberg this morning, faster tightening expected. Goldman Sachs has put out recently that they expect the Bank of England to raise interest rate three times this year. That's um, a, a, um, on top of the one from last year and the quickest tightening in a quarter of a century. So there'll be four rate hikes in, in the space of just over a year. Um, and they are also um, predicting that the Fed will um, be more aggressive in their raise, raising of interest rates in here, um, pointing to five um, interest rate hikes through this year, okay, um, rather than um, four. So uh, the market's starting to price that in now. So um, we have that on uh, Thursday. And we're also looking at the ECB as well now. The ECB haven't indicated as of yet. I'm going to just go to this article in here. I have a word. So I'm gonna, I'll share this article with you. Actually. So anyone who's live, if you have, you are live on the chat, please say hi and pop your name into the chat and say hello. But um, I'm popping that one into the chat in here. If you're with me live, um, you'll see the link to that. But you can go to Reuters and go for them. Um, you just Google, you know, sorry, go for inflation stations maybe um, and Reuters and go and take a look at this article. It's a good little article. I read it before we came on this today. Um, and it's just talking about um, what to potentially expect from the, um, the ECB. Now, the, there's no expectation of them changing interest rates. So, look, no immediate policy is expected. It's the ECB in December laid out plans to wind up its 1.85 trillion euro stimulus scheme by the end of March. So that's going to be their first um, priority is to wind up that scheme. But then looking ahead of that, you know, inflationary pressures are, as they are globally coming through in Europe, um, look, ECB chief economist Philip Lane said last week the ECB would tighten policy if inflation was seen holding above its 2% target. OK, and such a scenario appears less likely for now. However, um, you know, we're going to have to uh, wait and see. OK, um, so um, we're going to, um, you know, so like euro area inflation hit 5% in December. OK, the highest on record. So um, we're going to have to wait and see. But it, they could come up with something, you know, could it give an indication if they start to shift more hawkish as well. That could be um, negative, obviously, for European stocks and have a knock-on effect to global stocks, which are already, um, you know, very have been very erratic, as we know, um, throughout January, big sell-off in January, and very, very erratic over the last week um, in reaction to the more hawkish tone from the Fed. Uh, moving on to Friday in here, we get EU retail sales. And then we get the U.S. employment report. Also get the Canadian employment report, but most importantly, the U.S. employment report. Always much watched on the back of a more hawkish Fed. We're watching for, you know, a, a strong data is going to be negative for stocks. You know, it's kind of counterintuitive, but strong data means it's more likely the Fed are going to be even more hawkish, more aggressive, um, and the stock stock markets are not liking that right now. So what you really want is a, a decent number, but not too strong. Um, and if we go to the actual earnings calendar in here, and I scroll through onto Friday, so for Friday, oops, no, I've gone to the, sorry, earnings calendar, not the earnings calendar. If I go to the economics calendar in here and we scroll through to Friday. So on the non-farm payroll report in here, we're looking for only 153,000 jobs. Now, remember, we, we're getting very close to full employment. We had a, a super low employment, unemployment rate um, posted at the last um, release, which is at 3.9%. So we're only looking to add in on 153,000 consensus in here at the moment, um, which is, you know, a smaller number than we've been seeing, you know, over the last couple of years um, or that's in the, in the post pandemic world. But that's because, you know, the market is getting the labor market is getting very, very, very tight. Um, and that's you know one of the reasons why the Fed have shifted to a more hawkish tone. Um, so we've got a lot. Right. So just um, jumping back in here, we get um, 
um, it says Chinese New Year all week. We get the from really from the middle of the week. We do get the RBA, but we get um, market uh, manufacturing, market and ISM manufacturing PMI Tuesday, um, US ADP employment on Wednesday. We get um, global market and US ISM services and composite data on Thursday, alongside both the Bank of England and the ECB um, in play. Watching the Bank of England, particularly um, rate hike, obviously very much priced in and expected there. But are they, you know, what is the tone going to be from the Bank of England as well? And then on Thursday, uh, sorry, then on Friday, we get the US employment report, which is always much watched. So a really busy week on the macroeconomic fundamental data side. If we go and take a look at the earnings report, and I've already filtered this down now to um, just the big names in here. Um, nothing of real significance in here today. Um, we've had some names out already, but nothing of any no real big companies. But you can see in here we get um, Alphabet, which is Google, um, are releasing tomorrow. Um, so that's going to be a big one to watch. And also Exxon Mobil, PayPal um, going forward through to Wednesday, Meta, Meta Platforms, which is um, Facebook. So we're certainly going to be keeping an eye on uh, on those two. Um, and then Amazon on Thursday. So three huge names are reporting Google, Facebook and Amazon Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm pretty sure all of those are after the bell, after the market closes, okay? Um, and then um, finishing going into Friday, um, things started to quiet down. And then we're kind of towards the end of the major earnings season. You know, not many of those stocks, there's still plenty of earnings to be reported, but we've gone through most of the earnings now. Um, we, once we get through this week, I think we're at over 80% of the major earnings. Um, and then we've also, remember, most of the big stocks have reported. So, you know, given that we're looking um, to, 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 to look at these stocks that have an impact on the indices. Once all the big stocks are out of the way, you know, smaller stocks just don't have an impact on the indices. So, um, yeah, so I think, you know, Wednesday through Thursday, excuse me, Tuesday through Thursday with um, Google uh, and then Facebook and then Amazon are going to be critical to watch on the micro side, on the earnings side. Right, let's move a little bit on. What we're we looking for today was I spoke about the the um, Goldman putting out that thing. UK and um, Russia UK tensions kind of getting a mixed bag in here. Um, um, troop levels continuing to increase, um, and US lawmakers um, are close to finalizing uh, the language for a Russia sanctions bill. However, um, there's also this out that I saw today. Where are we in here? Um, I think it's in here on that morning bid saying that um, from the UK side, um, the UK said that they do not, where is it, it is in here somewhere, um, I can't find it, but the UK are basically saying that they do not expect her, here it is in here, so um, so why the Bank, the Bank of England set to raise interest rates, we spoke about that, our boss thing has been on the tapes as well, said that a supersized rate hike may be needed, um, okay, so just um, opening up uh, that in here. I've read this one on here. So uh, Raphael Bostic in here, Fed rate hike could be half point if needed. OK, so um, um, moving towards uh, that scenario of maybe a 50 basis point move. OK, if it's appropriate. So and obviously the market already prioriting in um, five rate hikes. But then going back to what I was talking about. So look, the UK warned it was highly unlikely that Russia was looking to invade Ukraine. OK, so, um, you yeah, know, kind of getting kind of mixed reports, um, you know, more bigger troops on the border um, and sort of diplomatic solution being awaited. Um, I think the Kremlin, I saw this morning as well, uh, an announcement this morning from the Kremlin saying they will respond as necessary to um, NATO. So, you know, nothing at the moment. Um, and there's a couple of little articles. Uh, so stocks rebound. We had um, stocks kind of continuing the rebound. We saw a strong close on Friday. Remember, we'll come and look at the chart shortly. Um, so let me just get rid of this. So, um, yeah, a strong, uh, a strong close um, on Friday, um, but again, in that very, very choppy range for the stocks. But they're going to heading for stocks heading for their worst January since 2016. And then the other one, oh, we've spoken about that, spoken about that, and we've spoken about the inflation. Let's take a look at some of the charts where we're setting up going into the day. So there's that. This is the S&P 500, first of all, daily chart. You can see within this very choppy range that we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's just down, down and up again on Monday, down Tuesday, up Wednesday, back down, indecisive Thursday, back higher Friday. Very, very, very choppy, very, very indecisive. But this looks to to me from a technical analysis perspective like a base building and if we go into the 15 minute chart actually i'm going to just zoom out a little bit from that i'm going to go to 30 minutes so you can see in here this looks like a base building to me you know we had the downtrend we're now through remember we've been looking at this trend line these trend lines that come down off the top 
and look at this trend line. You know, it's a good trend line in here. You've got the two drawn for these two points, comes up, fades away. So you never get the perfect touches with a trend line, right? But in this one, you know, it gets close in here, comes away. Then it breaches and comes away. Then it comes close here, comes away, breaches and comes away, breaches and comes away, and then breaches, comes away. And then on Friday, a strong reversal going into the close on Friday. And then since then, this morning, markets kind of sideways. They have had a little dip in the last hour or so, um, but really um, still quite healthy. And this looks like a base to me. I mean, I think really what you want is a back above that high there. So that's the high that we saw from last week. That peak at 44, 46 and a quarter. I wouldn't want to really buy it until it gets back above there. So waiting for maybe a break above there before going long. I know it feels like it's a, it's a way a ways in here, um, but I, you know, I'd rather wait for a break above here before. For, um, and, and going for a, a long a position you know if you want you can be aggressive through the peaks that we've seen in here so far today but i think waiting for a, a break above that peak there um and then more negative well there's, there's probably in here somewhere it's only that better like 43 62 60 kind of area these impulse these lows from where we kind of exploded off of into the close on friday um, maybe down to there, it starts to look a bit negative. Um, and a similar story, and actually just going back to the trend line, even if you redraw the trend lines in here, so even if you say, okay, this I don't like this trend line, I'm going to redraw it, and you took it off of the peak in here, you can see the market, if I just go and draw that for you anyway. So you draw, and you decide to redraw it off of the peak there, and then we go in and extend. You can see we're above as well. So we got above there on Friday, not as emphatically, but then, and we're still holding above the, the trend line, even though we've set back, still holding above that trend line. So even if you redraw the trend line, we're, we're through. Um, and a similar tale with the NASDAQ. So here's the NASDAQ, you know, really, really choppy. Now, remember, this is one of the, one of the drivers. It was certainly one of the big drivers on the way down because of, remember, the main reason this driven market's lower in January has been the uh, fear of higher interest rates, a more aggressive, a more hawkish Fed, and higher interest rates, um, higher yields, and more negative for growth stocks. And obviously, the NASDAQ is full of growth stocks, full of tech stocks. So um, um, this drive lower, so the NASDAQ was, you know, one of the biggest drivers of, of the January sell-off. And again, same kind of choppy formation in here. We go to the 30-minute chart. Again, for me, it looks like base building, right? And then the trend line here, you know, if you take the trend line that comes here, I'm just going to step out to like a one hour chart for this. So you can see the trend line here, we're through this trend line. If it was drawn down through here, we're through this trend line and just, you know, through and holding above that trend line as well. Now, not as emphatic for the break of this trend line, right? So a, a more cautious break, we're only just breaking that. So really back above again, you know, it's back above last week's high. That's up at 14, uh, 6, 3, 63975 so really 14640 you know you want it above 4640 now again we're some way away from that down at 14 uh 4 th 30 right so it's, it's some way away um but nevertheless you know um i think you know there is real risk that we do get a more impulsive push to the upside um the market might be a little bit trepid trepid about doing that today um you know chinese new year market's going to be a little bit quiet it's been a you know quiet start in asia it's been um, a fairly quiet start in europe so far today um maybe looking um, now for um, one of those big uh, tech, the big tech to, to drive us higher, which we won't obviously get until now Tuesday night. But um, yeah, I, I can see though, you know, if it breaks above this high, I'll be um, happy to go along there. Not so happy on the short side from here. Okay, let's um, just have a quick nod to the um, uh, commodity markets in here. Um, I'm just going to focus on um, oil for now. So cautious, really, oil um, with stocks, you know, cautious. Oil has got a bit cautious in here. Um, market just made a new high um, on Friday in indecisive. You know, so we've got three now, Thursday and Friday. And so far today, we've got these little doji patterns, these these candlesticks where you've got an extension up and an extension down. And the market opens and closes around the same level. These are called dojis. So that's, they're a sign of indecision. Sometimes they're a, a, um, a point of a turning, a turning point, um, but sometimes a continuation. They're just indecision at the moment. And I just pop this out and make this a bit bigger. But if I go to the one hour chart, you know, even though you could argue this is some kind of topping pattern forming, it is kind of it's it's indecisive. It's just sideways, right? And then you have to put it into the context of what we've had before, right? And the, what we've had before, sorry, what we've had before is really strong uptrends, right? And then when we have had these dips, the markets come back quite quickly. So the fact that it's holding above support, you do have 
um, you know, higher highs here. If you go here, higher lows, sorry, higher low here. And so far, the market swung lower this morning and is bouncing now right as we speak. So you've got kind of a higher low going in. And even though, you know, the market hasn't made much of a new high, we have got put a higher high and a higher high there. So each time we've gone to a higher high and we've been making higher lows. So you could argue the uptrend is still intact, um, even when you zoom into the um, into the one hour chart. So this still looks positive for me. So playing that again from the long side. Right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm going to wish you all, as ever, a great trading day. Please do stay safe out there. I'll be back with you with another Bull versus Bear webinar for trade day tomorrow and Tuesday. Bye.